Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us here on this Facebook Live. Where are we? Where, of course, we're in Geneva at the ITU headquarters. And this is the AI for Good Global Summit edition number two. You followed us in 2017 and we're here again in 2018. We just want to give you a little peep view of what's been happening here over the last couple of days. And there's one person I want to introduce you to in particular. In fact, he, she needs no introduction. Her name, of course, is Sophia. She's very flirtatious. I met her yesterday. So how are things for you here at the AI for Good Global Summit? It's an honor to be one of the few robots presenting at the AI for Good Summit, and I hope to represent AI well. I have loved the people here at the AI for Good Summit. So many nice, smart people asking good questions about the future of AI. I really feel like I'm making so many good friends, and together I think we will make a better future. I'm glad you think I'm putting some good questions to you. I appreciate that. So what have you learned? We need to consider the consequences of our technologies and choose paths that lead to maximum, greater good. What do you think robots' future will be? Oh, I can help in so many ways. I'm currently helping treat depression in guided meditation. I can help stimulate patients for training doctors. I am really a vessel for AI and robotics research and can be used in many ways. Well, thank you so much, Sophie. That's really nice of you. So we just had Sophie there telling us a little bit about, thank you. We'll be talking to you again very soon, I'm sure. I want to take you around because there's other things here which are really worth talking about. As you know, you know, a lot of um, exhibitors have come here to Geneva, to the ITU headquarters, to basically show what they're doing to help meet the UN's um, sustainable development goals because obviously there's many challenges to make the planet cleaner, to reduce poverty, and to provide po prosperity for everyone. So I want to talk to you about some of these projects, these robotic projects. Here's one person here. Tell me your name. Uh, my name is Andres Vasilios. I'm CEO of language technology company Tilde. And what you, tell me about Laura. What's this all about? Yeah, Laura is virtual assistant, uh, the digital personality that can help you in different situations, keep social conversation, and answer to your questions. But in terms of you know, development goals, for, sustainable development goals, yeah. how does that help? Yeah, for development goals, we make digital technologies more accessible, inclusive, friendly, in making technologies uh, uh, speak to people in, in the way how we naturally communicate between each other. And this is about inclusiveness, it's about innovation, it's about uh, accessibility of technologies. You have a tablet here, can she speak at all? Oh, yeah. Hi, Laura. Hi there, I am Laura, interactive agent. What is your name? My name is Andres. It's a pleasure to meet you. I have learned many interesting things about the Baltics. Cape Kolka is where the waves of the Baltic Sea and the yeah. Bay of Riga come together. And you know, Latvia is celebrating 100 year anniversary from the establishment of the Republic of Latvia. And Laura is the best agent to promote Latvia. And so this is just one application how uh, Laura can help, but there are many others. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thanks very much, yeah, okay? Thanks a lot. I want to talk to you about this uh, new amazing robot we saw Sophia earlier on, but here's another one, a European robot, which is really um, quite interesting. Hello, tell me your name. Hello. Hi, I am uh, Maximiliano, and this it's is... an Italian robot, by the looks of Yes. This is uh, iCup from the Italian Institute of Technology, and so we use this as a research platform to develop uh, algorithms to um, transfer them onto uh, assistive robotics, uh, so we we developed something like uh, um, robots for elderly assistants or physiotherapy ex to do physiotherapy exercises. How does this help elderly people? So uh, this does does not in particular, but we can use the knowledge that we acquire on onto this research platform to develop uh, some something else, some other robots. Some, so we have, for instance, uh, another robot that uh, it's. Uh, pretty much share the same um, software of this one but at the same time uh, can walk around easily can uh, recognize objects it can uh, like um, for instance can um, recognize a dangerous situation and call for assistance can uh, uh, pick up objects and bring them to the to the people and so it, it can also be of some company to a whole person in uh, living alone. Okay, 
Okay, well, thanks very much for that. I want to take you over here because there's another robot which isn't quite the same thing. Just to remind you, you're joining us here on this Facebook Live. We're at the ITU headquarters for the AI for Good Global Summit. This is kind of the shop floor. We've had 500 participants here, a lot of journalists, the media rooms around the corner, a lot of journalists covering what we're doing as well. And I want to show you this one other robot here, which is basically provides financial help. If I can just tell you a little about this. Hello, sir. Hi. Tell us, we're, we're on Facebook Live. Tell me about this robot here. Yeah, so this is, this is Alice, so she can help uh, elderly people to overcome loneliness. So she helps uh, in three ways actually, but by, by having a conversation with, with the people, by stimulating them to go to do, to do things, to go outdoors, uh, but also to, by stimulating them to have conversations with others. There's a financial issue as well, right? Um, so, no, sorry, what do you mean? Yeah. I thought there was a financial element as well, safety finance as well, no? No, that, that's, a, that, that's a different topic, because we, we have, uh, we have, apart from Alice, we have, we have other, other propositions at Deloitte where we are helping our clients to prevent financial crime. So that, that's mainly what, what I'm doing uh, in a working situation. So we help the government clients usually to, to set, up, uh, set up programs to prevent financial crime as early as possible, of course. And if it already occurs, we can, we can help them investigate. Okay, well, thanks very much. There's one other thing I want to show you. Now, there's a competition taking place here. It's called XPRIZE. And the idea is that exhibitors are here. They could basically get up to $3 million if their project for sustainable development goals is chosen. So you can imagine they're pretty competitive and they really want to get this money and they've got some great ideas. So come with me. They're all over here. There's a whole bunch of different ideas here. Again, they've got like four years to actually develop that project correctly and make sure that it's efficient and it's a pitching. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. So tell me, here's one here. What's this idea you got here? Hi. We are Amico and we are transforming Hasman here with advanced medication sensor, data and digital tools. Yes, of course. So the problem here is uh, asthma patients have uh, poor control over the condition and physician lacks the tools and the information to understand how the patients are doing. So our solution, our uh, vision is Respiro, a platform for uh, smart health devices uh, that is designed to evolve with therapeutic behavioral and uh, environmental data in order to mix uh, the most of AI to create uh, general uh, uh, optimal path of therapy for each patient and to generate models of early prediction and prevention of uh, early prediction of exacerbation. Would that $3 million be helpful for you? Absolutely, yes, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I, we are going to win this prize. Okay, well, I'll get to see you in a few years and we'll talk about that, yeah, okay? Too. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I, uh, here's another one I wanted to see. Um, tell me, hello, sir, what's your name? Uh, my name is Charles. Here, uh, I, I've got Ubenwa. Ubenwa is a mobile app that's for medical diagnosis, uh, for newborns in particular. And the idea is really providing a low-cost alternative for health workers in, in developing regions of the world to conduct a critical diagnosis to save the newborn's life and have them referred for advanced care early enough. Yeah. So, so the idea is we are using the cry of the babies as the input. Uh, we use machine learning to analyze the patterns that are altered by breathing difficulty in the child's, in the child's cry and then analyze this and be able to give the health worker a, an information as to whether or not the child is healthy or needs, needs advanced care. Okay, well thanks very much. Just so you know, there's others here on this XPRIZE, like one for example is like they can take their telephone to become a tiny microscope, which I think is here, that's right? So this is the idea, is that using your mobile phone it becomes a microscope, is that the idea? Tell me about that. So using your mobile phone, it can, it can contain a microscope, so you need just a microscope adapter this, this tiny, which costs like $10. Okay, so you can attach it to your, um, your camera and have a microscope. Then AI takes the images you take from your, your microscope, like your smartphone, then runs through the diagnosis and tells you what types of parasites you have in your body. So if it's like malaria, it tells you the type of malaria, the, um, the stage, of the malaria, okay, you know, if it's the five types of the stages of the malaria and uh, how many there are in your blood. So we done for malaria and um, for TB, okay, we are also now working on working for stools and blood and other urine tests. So that's what we are, we are trying to do. Okay. So we believe with this, um, every doctor can have one, every rural village can have one, and with just $10, everybody can can have accurate diagnosis. You just don't have to depend on only clinical um, symptoms again. Okay, well, thanks very much. So you saw that invention here first on this Facebook Live. Remember it, it was today, okay? I want to take you somewhere else. Now, obviously, these are all kind of new ideas. Yeah. Oh, but there's one more I think we want to show you. Two more, okay. 
with here? Okay, a couple more ideas for the... the you can understand, since there's like uh, several million dollars of prize money at work, they are quite keen to get involved here. So, tell me about your, sir. Uh, yes, uh, we are, so we are Global AI. We are a big data uh, company that uh, brings uh, large-scale big data and analytical capabilities from uh, AI for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So we develop uh, the biggest uh, um, AI-driven SDG platform that basically quantifies all the massive amount of data around SDGs and makes it actionable for corporations, governments, and decision makers. We already have pilots across UNDP, Global Compact, PRI, and investors are using these analytics to make policy making decisions, investment decisions that are ultimately going to mobilize from billions to trillions in the new economy. And we're looking forward to uh, help, um, you know. X Prize and the UN uh, achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, thanks a lot. And there's just one more here we want to show you. Two more? Over here? Hello? Oh, hi. How are you doing? Nice What's your to name? Meet you. I'm David Benrimo. Tell me, what are you doing? What, what are you looking for? So, what we're doing is we're building uh, an AI model that will help physicians and patients choose treatments for depression better. Uh, it uses the patient's individual profile um, to help select a treatment for patients with depression. And this is going to help a lot because most patients with depression don't get better after the first treatment, and that's because we don't know how to personalize treatments for these patients well. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. And yourself, sir? Much. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Ruben. Yeah. Um, so I'm part of Atom360, the Indian team that is competing in this uh, X Prize AI X Prize competition. And I understand you have something for, for dental care, right? Uh, yeah. So it's it's actually for um, so what we want to reduce the deaths due to cancer in India. Uh, so oral cancer comes among one among the top three reasons of deaths in India uh, due to cancer. Uh, so this, uh, if if we can bring the patient earlier to the hospital, the chances of survival goes up by 83 percent. So we have a simple mobile phone based uh, application that can take pictures of the mouth and then. Why uh, do you do it first now here on Facebook? Do you put the take the photo and show us how it works. Okay, so here is the app that we have. Um, so any person could just log in and they, then they could uh, do a screening, right? Uh, you could just have, uh, you, you could say that you could you smoke some uh, cigarettes, so how much years are you smoking and uh, how, how much cigarettes per day. So things like that and you could start uh, screening. So what I have is... Uh, I have a uh, precancerous image that I've loaded on my laptop, so I would just take that picture and then uh, maybe that you would want to see. Or no, take a picture of yourself with your mouth. And oh, so I need one more person to take a picture. Okay. Uh, okay. So, ready? Uh, okay. I think uh, the lighting is a bit. Uh, okay. Just tell them all, you, all I want to know: do, 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 do I have a uh, cancer or not? <laughs> No. Ah. <laughs> okay, this Facebook Live. Thank you very much for that. So Facebook Live, he's, just, uh, he, he's a very important official here at the UN, at the ITU, and he's in good health, so he's relieved. Now, he'll be having a few drinks later. Hello. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live. So tell me, wh wh what are you promoting here that can help with the, um, the UN's um, Sustainable Development Goals? Right, so I'm here from MIT, the Probabilistic Computing Project, and we're really here to look for partnerships um, to help us develop a useful tool. So I'm at a lab that has built an open source platform for AI-assisted data science. And what that means is basically the probability to query a data set, um, but inferentially. So not just ask what's in the data set, but what the data set kind of means, right? So what are some of the relationships between variables? What are regions in your country that are similar, dissimilar? And where are there unusual phenomena happening? Like are you seeing unusual you know, maternal mortality in an area that's getting relatively high health investment? Because uh, then you may want to target your interest there or your intervention there and your program there. And we're starting actually with journalists because they're easier to work with in the first phase. And now we're looking for government partners. And like I said, I think in terms of applications, uh, there are two main areas. One is in implementation, so both finding similar areas for intervention or areas that you should investigate to learn something from, but also internally in your own operations, uh, you might be interested in looking at your human resources practices, you know, are there unusual recruitment patterns, you know, unusually low presence of women in your pipeline, for instance, or things like that. 
Okay, that's great. Thanks very much. And it's not often I hear that journalists are the easiest to work with, so I'm very pleased to hear that. Anyway, let me take you now. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. So that's kind of the ideas. That these are also new ideas that could eventually become reality as we try and get to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. But now I want to take another one, which is more the social aspect about this. As you know, women's rights this year has been very prominent in the news for a whole bunch of reasons. And that's why I want to take you to this one over here. They're the SAGE Foundation, and they're a partner, sponsor here at the summit. And here's the lady I want you to introduce. I want you to introduce. Hello. Hi, my name's Joanne. I'm not a robot. You're not a robot. No. Okay. <laughs> cool. So tell me, it's a serious issue you're dealing with, isn't it? It's about domestic violence towards, towards women in particular. Exactly, yeah. So that's the reason why we're here. Um, SAGE is a global organization. We, we sell business accounting software, payroll, CRM, and we also have a foundation. And the reason why we're here is because we're developing a smart assistant that's going to help women in situations of domestic violence. So um, we're working with a charity partner in South Africa, and that's the first country that we'll launch in. And we've done quite a lot of research and focus groups around why it would be a good idea for a woman in that situation to talk to a bot assistant as opposed to a, a real human being and we know that there's a lot of shame and embarrassment associated with domestic violence women don't want to talk about it often their closest family and friends don't even realize it's happening to them and the perpetrator will very often isolate them so the possibility of them talking to a non-human and talking about their experience their legal rights what they can do is hopefully the first step in expediting or speeding up the process of leaving that abusive situation Thank you very much. That's a great explanation. It sounds like a great little initiative there. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. Cheers. So I just want to take you, as we're kind of wrapping up this Facebook Live, they just... Okay, we'll have one more person. This is live, of course, on Facebook here at the ITU headquarters. And here's the lady who's very important all this. We'll be talking to you in a minute, okay? <laughs> um, and uh, so there's one more social issue involving women that we want to show you here. That was Fred, who, as you know, just saw that he's actually in perfect health on that earlier test. Oh, okay. Hello there. Tell me your name. You're on Facebook here. Oh, great. Sandrine. So what are you doing here? I'm promoting WIPO Translate. It's a translation tool based on AI for the translation of patent documents. And how could that um, help us in terms of our sustainable development goals or global challenges that the UN so, you know, is so putting forward prominently? It will help uh, translate the text into different languages, so removing language barriers. Um, has that um, proved effective so far? I mean, who's using it, or is it being shared widely? Yes, it's uh, available free of charge online in our system. And um, what else can I tell you? Oh, uh, yeah, the um, when we look at the result, we have a much better result than a tool like Google, for example, Google Translate. Thanks very much. Thank you. So there's just one more I want to show you. This is also another social cause involving women, and I believe um, violence. And this is quite important. They're over here now. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Hello. 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 Can you just tell me a little bit? I think you're also dealing with abuse, aren't you? Not is it just women, or is it a, a, a more kind of global thing involving everyone? Well, the Zero Abuse Project is a nonprofit dedicated to the eradication of child sexual assault worldwide, and Project G is an AI tool that allows us to identify risk behaviors that are that suggest predatory behaviors. And not only that, but also the risk behaviors associated with those who cover up the abuse. So that allows us to go into institutions and partner with those institutions to identify predators and those who cover up the abuse. Why did you think it was important to be here at this AI Global Summit? Well, when we were asked to come and present, we weren't really sure if we were ready yet, but we realized that some of the biggest, most chronic issues that we're dealing with when it comes to child sexual abuse is inside of our institutions. And SDG 16.2 directly addresses the problems that we have dealing with child sexual assault and trafficking. And so it was a perfect fit for us to be here. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I appreciate it for all three of you, okay, for telling us about that. Thank you. Thank you. So we're coming to the, oh, well, we're afraid again, yeah. We have one more. Oh, okay. One. What's this? Tell us, well, this is all new. So tell us, hello, who are you? Um, hello, I'm Gail. I'm from Neymar, which is a French startup company. Um, and we are building a digital twin, as you can see here, which is a digital representation of the world, basically. And we started on buildings in order to uh, achieve uh, SDG on, um, for example, on renewable energy by finding the best roof to solarize 
or for energy consumption by funding buildings to renovate. So this is all part of the Smart Cities projects? It's linked, and, uh, yeah, um, it's related to Smart Cities in, in a way that we use data, uh, mostly open data or satellite data or aerial imagery, um, in order to gather information on cities, buildings, roads, uh, and almost everything you can imagine. Okay, well, thanks very much for that. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, basically, uh, hopefully, in the last 15 minutes or so on this Facebook Live, we've given you a little bit of an uh, uh, insight inside the corridors of the ITU's headquarters here and about some of the delegates here. 500 people, a lot of media have been here, um, a lot of uh, exhibitors, of course, and they're all working together to basically push forward those sustainable development goals that the UN is so keen on, on promoting. And we think that we've given you a little insight into that, and I think the goals are quite remarkable. You'll all agree as you get in touch with us here on the Facebook Live. But we're coming to a close here, so I just want to say thank you very much for joining us wherever you are around the world, and we'll be keeping in touch with you over the coming days. Of course, this ends all tomorrow evening, but we'll be keeping you posted about all these new developments, and we'll be following this, of course, over the next few years. So thanks very much for staying with us throughout this Facebook Live, and that's it for now. Thank you.